Welcome to Unit 2, Lab 4, Page 3, Brick Wall. In this project, we're going to build an abstraction that will allow us to create a brick wall. Now, the reason we have to build our own abstraction is because there isn't a block that comes built into Snap that allows us to just create a wall immediately. Snap and other programming languages empower us to create anything we can dream of. We just have to be willing to put in the work to figure out how to use the available tools in order to create it. So let's think about what a brick actually is. A brick is just a dark red rectangle. In fact, we can draw a brick by using the pen. All we have to do is increase the pen's width property to make it thicker, and then we just draw a short line. The problem is that when you draw a thick line in Snap, it rounds the edges of that line. So what we have to do is enable flat line ends in the gear menu. Or we can just load the project that's shown on the lab page. The draw brick block that we're going to use already has the right color, has flat line ends enabled, and is ready to go. Let's use problem decomposition to figure out what we need to do to draw a brick wall. If we look back at the brick wall, we can see that there's two types of rows of bricks. One where all of the bricks are the same length, let's call that row A, and one where the first and the last brick appear to be smaller, let's call that row B. Both rows are exactly the same length. Actually, maybe that means that the shorter bricks in row B have to be half of the length as those in row A because they both contain six bricks total. So we can see that we have to create two abstractions, one for drawing row A and one for drawing row B. In order to draw row A, we have to draw six bricks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate draw brick five times so I end up with uh, six copies. Let me just duplicate this to make it a little bit simpler. And this should be my code for drawing row A. Let's see if it works. Uh-oh, there's no gap in between every single brick. So if I look at draw brick, actually, let me do that. If I look at draw brick, I can see that after snap draws a brick, it lifts up the pen. So I don't have to lift up the pen. That must not be it. Oh, what I have to do is I have to move a little bit in between every single brick. So I can do something like this. Let me see if that works. Let me clear the stage. Okay, it kind of works. Maybe 10 steps is a little bit too far. Let me try five steps. Maybe that's a better distance for like the gap in between bricks. Perfect. But the issue is that there's a lot of repetition. And when you see repetition, you should think that there's a better way to do things. So there is. I'm gonna go over to the control palette and instead of repeating my code, I'm just gonna repeat what I need, which is to draw a brick and to move five steps, but not 10 times. I'm gonna do it six times. And let's see if it draws the same thing. Perfect. Now what I can do is I can create a block and call it row A, and I can throw that code in there because that's going to draw the correct row. So I can throw this code into row A, and now we have an abstracted block that will draw row A that's very simple and clean to use. Let me just clean this up and look at that. Now we can draw row A anytime we want. Now let's do the same thing for row B. In row B, when I make that block, I have to keep in mind that the first brick and the last brick have to be half of the length. So I have to go back to row A because I'm gonna need a copy of draw brick. I, <laughs> I accidentally forgot it in here. So let me make a copy of draw brick from row A. I'll bring it into row B. And I have to make sure that the first brick in row B is half of the length of the regular brick. So the regular brick is 30, let's make it 15. And we also have to remember that the last brick is also going to be 15 because it's also going to be half. Now what I can do is actually use my row A inside of row B because the bricks inside of here are very similar to those in row A. But you know what? Let's not mix and match. Let's just keep it separate for now. Let me use draw brick and let me just change the length to 30 because it'll be easier to see and modify later on. So I have to do basically the same thing. I have to draw a brick and then I have to move, let's say five steps. And I'm gonna repeat this process, not six times, but five instead. Because if we look at row B, it only has five full bricks. And then we draw the last brick that's short. So let's see if this works. I'm going to hit apply. I'm gonna clear my stage. And when I run row B, I have to pull it onto the stage first. When I run row B, Look at that. 
it doesn't look perfect. If we look at the beginning, it looks like it drew two bricks in a row. So we probably have to move a few steps in between or just before we start the repeat. So now I debug that. Let me hit apply. Let me try it out. Let me clear my stage. And when I hit row B, it looks like it drew it perfectly. In number four, we're trying to create an abstraction to draw a brick wall with the specified number of rows. We could import the even block that we created in a previous lab, but I'm just going to create it from scratch again. I'm going to create a predicate that allows me to detect if a number is even. So even question mark, and this is going to have one parameter called number. And the way that this block is going to work, let me close out that block. The way that even is going to work is that it's going to divide the input, that number by two, and see if there's a remainder of zero. Because remember, if a number is even, when it's divided by two, it has a remainder of zero. So the way to capture the remainder is to use the mod reporter. So I'm going to go over to operations, and I'm going to take that number and divide it by two. Now this isn't enough. Now what I have to do is I have to check to see if the answer to this equals zero. So if the response or the report from that number equals zero, then this whole entire thing is going to be true. It is an even number. If it's anything other, probably one, it's going to be an odd number. So I'm going to hit apply and I can test out my block that I've just created. So I can try a, a number like 23 and it says false, good. If I try 11, it's false. What if I try 10? 10 is even. Now we do have an issue here. I can type in text and when I run it, it says false but I don't want to even allow the user to type in any text. So I want to edit this and I want to make sure I set my number equal to a number. So I have to give it a type of number. Let me hit apply. And now you'll see that the input to even is rounded off so it won't even accept text. Wait a sec, why do we even need a block that could detect if a number is even? I guess we can create rows using our row A abstraction for the odd rows and row B abstraction for the even rows. That could work. However, before I even get that far, I just realized that I almost forgot. We have to figure out a way to make our sprite move in between the rows so that the rows are aligned. Otherwise, all the bricks will be in one long row. So if I was to click row A and row B back to back like this, you'll see that it just keeps going off the stage. So I need to kind of like reset my sprite before it starts drawing the next row. So you'll notice that when a row is drawn, the sprite is facing to the right and to draw the next row, I have to get it to turn around. So maybe I can use the turn 180 degrees block and make it turn around. And then let's see what happens if I have it draw row B. Well, it's just going to go over row A and that's not what I want. I have to move it down along the Y axis. So let me change Y by, let's try, well, let's try 10. Let's see what happens. Let me clear the stage and if I use if I draw row A and then I click my movement and draw row B, oh, they're still attached and that's not really what I want. Plus, I don't really want it to draw from the bottom up. I want it to draw from the top to the bottom. So I actually have to change Y by a negative number. Let's try negative 15 or so. Let's try this one more time. I'm going to draw row A. I'm going to turn and switch around. And then I'm going to draw row B. Now you'll notice that Row B actually doesn't look perfect. We have an issue here. They don't look like they're the same length. Now the reason for that must be because we're including the little gap as part of the first row, as part of row A at the end. So in order to remove that, we actually have to make the bricks on the sides a little bit smaller for row B. I think this is an appropriate place to stop and we'll continue in part two.